Hello everyone. Amazon is selling a new budget smartphone, the Blue R1 HD, for around $50. Is it worth it? Let's get this first out of the way. This phone is cheap because Amazon is subsidizing it with the ads you see when you turn on the screen. This software is only available for Prime members in the US store. If you're not a Prime member, you can get an ad-free variant for $100. Let's get the specs out of the way. We get 102 gigabit RAM, 8 to 16 gigabit of storage, 1.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, and 4G LTE connection. Here we're looking at the $60 version, which is $10 extra from the base model because of the 8 gigabit storage and 2 gigabit of RAM. The thickness of the phone measures at 8.7 millimeters. It's not thick, but it's not thin either. In terms of height and width, it measures at 143.5 by 72 millimeters. The plastic back cover is nice and grippy, so no worries slipping this phone off your hand and doesn't pick up fingerprints. Now along the sides of the phone, we find metallic aluminium frame and the volume and power buttons, which are also made of the same material so it actually feels nice and sturdy. Towards the bottom, there's a micro USB port so there's no rapid charge in here. And along the top, we find the typical headphone jack. Peeling off the back, there's two micro SIM slots, a micro SD slot for expandable storage up to 64GB and 2500mAh battery but unfortunately it's not removable. In terms of power capacity, I've been using this phone for more than a month and I can tell you that it should be good enough to get you through a casual day with at least 4 hours of screen on time. Just below the battery you find the speakers but at the worst possible place. It's exactly where we place the palm of our hand holding the phone. In addition, there's no heavy bass and it's not loud at all. Moving towards the front of the phone, there's a 5-inch 720p IPS display featuring 294 ppi. Viewing angle is great, picture does appear sharp and vivid, but it doesn't come close enough to AMOLED display. The display is covered with Gorilla Glass and it's rounded off at the edges, which is an excellent touch for a budget phone. Moving on to the camera, I would say it's decent and pretty good for the price you're paying for. The front camera features 5 megapixel and LED flash as well. The back camera sticks out a little bit and features 8 megapixel and LED flash. No optical image stabilization included in this phone. It can take full HD video at speed of 30 frames per second. In terms of picture quality, image does appear clear and crisp in daylight conditions, but color depth isn't really that great. When you go shooting indoors or in low light conditions, there's a little bit more noise but it's not really that bad. But in extreme low light conditions, pictures do get much worse. On the software side of things, it comes with Android Marshmallow 6.0 right out of the box. Of course, you'll see a few Amazon blotware apps, but in general, it's a stock version of Android. The ad are based off what Amazon thinks you're interested in, and it appears on the lock screen only. On a day-to-day -day usage, I haven't noticed any serious like. However, running Geekbench 3, the score doesn't sound appealing, but this is a $60 phone after all. Casual games seems to run fine in general, but maybe with less graphic details when comparing it to a flagship phone. Now testing with 3D Mark, it does seem to be doing decent. Overall, the phone is decent, unlocked, maybe not fancy, but for a tight budget, I would say we're getting a fantastic product. The reason I got this phone is because I need another smartphone for work, a cheap phone with dual SIM capabilities and I found this phone. It definitely worth the money and I do recommend the Blue R1 HD to someone looking for a low budget phone that doesn't look cheap. So this is it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.